touchdown. We need to be able to execute the fundamentals on offense, defense, and special teams. Pressure coming back. Kevin Snyder, team on the way flips. And then do it over and over and over again. Coming and blocked. Blocked. Because the team that does it better is usually a team that wins. Live from Brother Jimmy's on Easton Avenue in New Brunswick, this is the Kyle Flood Show. Your chance to talk with the head coach of the Scarlet Knights. The Kyle Flood Show is brought to you by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. Pepsi, live in the moment. The beat starts at Pepsi.com. Pepsi, live for now. UPS. To learn how UPS can put the power of logistics to work for you, visit thenewlogistics.com. To be a part of the show, call 855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-356-6344. Now, let's go live to Brother Jimmy's in New Brunswick. Alongside Coach Flood, here's Chris Carlin. Welcome back to Brother Jimmy's, everybody, for another edition of the Kyle Flood Show. I'm here with Coach Kyle Flood as we... Get into the show tonight. If you want to come up for questions, we have our microphone with Jimmy right here. We love to have you. We're ready to break down this game today. You know, playing down the number 16 team, Nebraska, coming in, Coach. How, how do you feel now? I want to talk to you a little bit about, of course, last game we'll wrap up that. But what do you take out of a game like that, Coach? Well, uh, let me start by saying it's great to be back in Brother Jimmy's with a lot of friendly faces here. You know, when you go on the road and, and to a hostile environment like we did, it's nice to be back home and, and, again, to see some familiar faces. We got some people here from the Riot Squad. Chris Collins not going to be with us tonight. We know Mark Malusis is on his way, mm -hmm. so we'll, uh, we'll get a chance to see him in a couple minutes. I think there's a – to answer your question, I think there's a couple things that you take out of the game. And when you play a game like that and it doesn't go your way, you know, one thing going into the game, we knew we were playing a very talented football team, a very well-coached football team, and we knew the margin for error was going to be slim. And we didn't perform as well as we wanted to. There's no doubt about that. I think what you have to do is you got to evaluate it. you got to see the reasons for it. you got to own it as a player, as a coach. And then you got to move on. And it's a fine line because you, you can't just say, hey, it's, a, it's in the past, let's move on, because you have to correct the mistakes of that game. The most positive thing, I think, for us as a program that came out of that game was how hard our players played for the duration of the game. And when you get in a game like that and the score is a little bit lopsided, uh, you, watch, you watch games around the country, and there are some teams that don't finish that game the way we did. So uh, I'm excited about how hard we played. I'm not that excited about the result or how we played. I know we can play a lot better than that, and when we do, we'll be able to compete with anybody in the country. And this week, anybody in the country happens to be a, a really fine Nebraska football team. And as you talk about correcting mistakes, as you look at the film and you see a little bit what Ohio State does, how do you try to influence on that with, with a little bit of what Nebraska does and mix that into the game weekend? How do you prepare to try to do better things as you would do versus Ohio State now going against Nebraska? Yeah, I think that's the key. I think that's the key is, is really noting the corrections from the last game and then seeing what applies going forward. First and foremost, what jumps out to you right away is they have a dual threat quarterback. They've got a young man by the name of Tommy Armstrong, who is a tremendous, tremendous football player, averages over six yards a carry. And when he throws it, throws it very effectively. Probably the biggest improvement when you watch his film from last year to this year, he's always been a tremendous runner. Now he's become a really effective passer. Uh, we saw the same kind of quarterback last week with Barrett. And, and handling that dual threat quarterback in the run game and then making sure you protect your, uh, your pass coverage is matched up with it. Uh, definitely one of the goals to get better at this week as we get ready. And I know you got this question a lot, Coach. We've been playing in the atmosphere of 106,000 people. What's it going to be like playing it now in Nebraska, you know, as they've been able to sell out games for 50 years now, I believe it's been now. Sure. And, and for us as coaches, I think, you know, I've been coaching 21 years now, and, and you, know, you go into a lot of different environments, and whether it's a place like Arkansas, a place like Louisville on a Thursday night, you know, or, or a place like Ohio State, you, you, you're in some great environments. Now, the Nebraska environment, as it's a tremendous environment. They've got a great tradition of sellouts there. Uh, it speaks to the, the passion and the loyalty of their fan base. And they've been doing it for a long time. But we're not playing the game against 30 to 50 years of tradition. Mm -hmm. We're playing the game against their football team. And they've got a fine football team. 
but we really got to focus on the details of what we do. And, and again, another message that I gave to the players that I'll share with you, the answers for us are in the details of what we do. They're not in different things. You know, what we do when done at a high level is able to work against anybody in the country. And I feel it will allow us to compete with anybody in the country. Now we have to do it better. So being in the locker room after the game, you know, you said you were very happy with the way the team finished. What was your message to the team as soon as you got into the locker room after the game was over, getting ready to head back to back to Jersey? Yeah, very simple message now. Own, own, own the game. Mm -hmm. Own the game. Do not uh, you know, that give credit to your opponent. Own the mistakes of the game and then move on. And I think that's important to do after a game like that. So as you get into it now, game week now building up. So do you focus on things on Sunday night that you try to get more of your stars into? I know you want to get them rest, of course, but do you try to build right into it that Sunday night practice and get into the game plan on Monday and then going into Tuesday's game week? I really like the fact that we practice on Sunday nights. Mm -hmm. I like getting back out there regardless of the result on Saturday. I think it's important to turn the page and get your eyes moving forward. So we did. We went out there Sunday night. Uh, we spent a good amount of time watching the film before we went out, uh, and then we went outside for about 30 to 45 minutes, and we went through a period where we did all corrections from the game, and then we did another period where we looked ahead to some of the things that we feel are, are the basis of what Nebraska does. You know, Obviously, they're going to game plan for us the way we're game planning for them, but I think every team has things that are, that are the basis of what they do, certain pressures, certain run schemes. So we were able to get a little bit, of a a little bit ahead and a little bit more of a look forward to the following week. So take it now, how much does a coach as you would – now lean on your senior leadership going into a game like this and the rest of the season now. Coming off a loss, now you just want to get that out of your head. How much would you lean on like a Gary Nova now for the team to lead you now to you know, forget about everything last week and focus on being one to know this week? You're absolutely right. I think you, you, this is a week where you are absolutely leaning on your leadership uh, to make sure we're going out there and preparing the right way and, and nobody is dwelling on what happened in the past. And, and I know I've spent some time talking about this this year, but I think it's important for a team to understand this. There are challenges that come with disappointment, and there are challenges that come with success. This week we're dealing with the challenges that come with disappointment. Mm -hmm. And what's important to understand is what happened last week is over. We've looked at it. We've corrected it. Now we get to start, the game, we start a game over again against a different op opponent with different personnel, with different schemes, and in a different environment. Now that environment will be equally as challenging, equally – as uh, as loud for sure, uh, but I didn't think that the noise was an issue for us last week. Now we got to mm -hmm. do some other things better, but I don't think handling the uh, the crowd noise was an issue. Well, now you two two uh, two practices in now into the game week. How have you seen the team so far coming off of that week off of last week? Now getting ready in preparation for this week and now wrapping everything up tomorrow. I, I thought we had a good workout yesterday. I thought we had a great practice today. You know, yesterday we worked out in spider pads, so we didn't do a lot of hitting mm -hmm. yesterday. Got a chance to implement the first and second down. Uh, game plan and then today we put in the rest the third down the goal line the short yarders the red zone but we did it in pads so we got a chance to do some of the things from yesterday in pads and fit them and then we got a chance to install some other things in pads and it'll be the only padded practice of the week for us uh, but I thought it was an excellent practice and I'll tell you why it was an excellent practice it was an excellent practice because the scout teams did a tremendous job mm -hmm. both sides of the ball and both coordinators were very complimentary to me right after practice at how hard the scout teams played and, and you know this, Eric, from playing. You know, those guys that are given the look, when they're going as hard as they can, they raise the level of everybody else in practice yep. because those starters don't want you know, they, they to be called out for missing a block or missing a tackle against somebody on the scout team. And uh, how do you keep them motivated each and every week? I'll never forget, as you just said, the scout team players. I was going up against one of the great running backs we've had here, Jawan Jamison. and he was on the scout team. And I remember when he would break out those long runs and, you know, they give them a full effort. How do you keep the team, the scout team motivated each and every week now? I think it's just a matter of them understanding how important they are to the process. Mm -hmm. Everybody on the team has a role. Everybody would love for that role to be on game day and, and be out there and be one of the starters and the premier. Of course. I, I get that. But everybody on the team is important. And by them going hard in practice, I think when they hear the compliments from the coaches on the staff about what they're doing, not only are they doing a better job of getting us ready for the game, but they're doing a better job of getting themselves ready to ultimately be the ones who are playing on game day. Exactly. And as I was saying, it's, just, it's usually harder as this, the season goes on. People get dinged up and everything. How do you go about picking out a practice? If, as you said, Tuesday was in spider pads. Then you got a little bit after it today. How do you pick, pick and choose that? Is it by game week or is it already planned out? 
Uh, well, no, it's it, it's not planned out ahead of time. I think okay. you really, you, I think you have to evaluate where your team's at every week, and every week is a little bit different. Last week we're coming off a bye week. We hit a little bit more getting ready for the game. Um, this week, you know, we're we're getting ready for our eighth game of the season. We've played a lot of physical football games. We're coming off a physical football game. Yeah. And the team we're playing is coming off a bye. So I want to make sure that our players feel as good as they possibly can feel uh, when we land in Nebraska to get ready for that football game. So, you know, we, we made a road trip to Ohio. We came back, and now we're going to make a road trip to Nebraska to play a team coming off a bye. It's a little bit of a strange schedule. That won't be an issue as long as we take care of our bodies this week and we try to put the plan together to make sure we do it. And as you talk about taking care of the bodies, I know – the cold tubs, usually by the end of September, they usually you can take them away from outside. You try to get the players in the cold tub now into the training room a little bit more now. Because I remember those cold tubs, Coach. I never, no matter where it was, I never liked them. Come on, I, know. I <laughs> never liked, I never liked them. They did help. They, I admit, they do help, but I never did like them, Coach. They that, do help. That I, shock, man. I go in them a couple, once or twice during training camp. I go in them, and I'm always, I, I always say to myself, I, I really need to go in more because they do help. <laughs> they do, but it's not very comfortable. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, we actually kept them outside until about a week and a half ago. Really? Yeah, we tried to stretch it as long as we could because we get more guys done quicker. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and now the last two weeks, we've done exactly what you said. We, we've moved uh, the uh, the travel squad now, does the cold tubs after practice indoors and, and to make sure you take care of your body because as the season goes on, some of it is a little bit of a battle of attrition. Mm -hmm. And every team in the country now is dealing with guys that are either injured and out or dinged up and possibly playing or not playing and, it's critical that you're doing everything you can from what you put in your body to the amount of rest you get to the amount to what you do when you're done practicing. And, you know, we did we did a study in the off season and we brought somebody in to talk to our football team. Seventy percent of your recovery after a workout happens within the first 60 minutes. Really? So what you do in those first 60 minutes after a training session, after a practice session is critical to how you're going to recover and be able to perform the next day. So we try to maximize Try to maximize every minute of the day, but that first 60 minutes after practice, we really try to maximize it. Well, going into more of the game now, I believe Nebraska, when it comes to planning the schedule, they're an hour or two behind. How does that go now with a 12 p.m. kick Eastern time? How does that go into scheduling now? How you got to get the guys up early and then for breakfast and then meetings and, of course, getting ready to go to the game? Yeah, they're, they're, a, they're a central time team. Mm -hmm. They're one hour behind us, so it's an 11 a.m. local kick, mm -hmm. a 12 noon uh, Eastern kick for us. And something that's pretty commonplace in the Big Ten from, from, uh, from understanding what some of the schedules are. And I think it's perfect for us, to be very honest with you. Mm -hmm. We're a morning practice team. So our team meetings on Tuesday and Wednesday start at 7.45 a.m. Uh, our pregame meal will be at 7.30 in the morning on Saturday. Uh, you know, we're going to kick off at 11 a.m. local time. We start practice at 10 a.m. local time you know, every day of the week. So I really think that going to a morning schedule a couple of years ago, although we didn't do it for this reason, uh, really is going to help us uh, be ready to go at these 11 a.m. kicks because, as I tell the team, it's, it's a get-up-and-go game. It's a get-up, pregame meal, get on the bus, and let's go. We're going to play. I was about to say, so when it comes to, to playing these games, you you always say that you like these 12 o'clock noon, noon kicks. But you get the same feel from the team also? I like them when they're home more you than like I like them when they're away. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I like them when they're home because you, you, you gain some family time at the, you know, mm -hmm. in the evening. Um, we probably won't get back to about 8, 30, 9 o'clock on Saturday night because of the time change in the flight. Uh, but I do think I do think that these games we're uh, we're better prepared for them because of what our practice schedules like during the week. Gotcha. So now, coach, you see this team. I'm gonna go talk about the offense. You know, spread offense, but they love to power the ball down. Is it different than any other spread offense that you're used to? Because you know, with Amir Abdullah, their great running back, they love to run the ball. They try to mismatch you, get as many people out of the box, and just pound it. I think you know. Now I think there's enough of these spread offenses out there that you really can usually put them in one category or another. There's probably two to three different versions of what you're seeing in the mm -hmm. spread offense. A and this version, when I look at it, to me looks a lot like Nevada. Uh, maybe not what Nevada's doing full-time nowadays, but when um, Chris Alt was the head coach there a couple years ago and Colin Kaepernick was playing for them, this looks a lot like that offense. A and, and I'm very impressed with it. it it generally starts up front, and for them it does. They've got three seniors on the inside, two juniors at tackle, uh, three other juniors that play in the game. They play eight offensive linemen mm -hmm. in, in their games, and, and they're all very impressive. But they're all upperclassmen. They, they understand the system. They understand what they're doing. And, and then with their quarterback, and, you know, we haven't mentioned him yet, and it's amazing we've gotten mm -hmm. to this part of the show and still haven't mentioned Amir Abdullah, mm -hmm. yep. who is one of the premier running backs in all of college football. And, 
I got a chance to, to listen to him speak at our Big Ten Media Days, and just a very impressive young man uh, in a lot of ways. But you've got a tailback who averages 6.4 yards a carry. We've got a quarterback who averages over six yards a carry. You've got an older offensive line, and you've got a system of offense uh, that is really, really challenging to defend. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's, a, there's, no, uh, there's no mistaking why they've had the success they've had uh, on offense this year. And then you put into it a couple pretty good receivers on the outside yeah. and, and a freshman number 15 who's returned two punts for touchdowns this year. Uh, they're going to present some challenges for us on defense, no doubt. Well, as, well, as, you, as you said, Coach, you know, the, you're an offensive line coach. You say they play eight offensive linemen. You always want to play five in the beginning, but how, do, how does that kind of rotation, do you like one having to play eight? Do you have to be confident playing eight, or how does that go? Well, I think if you, if you have – what I've always liked is I've always liked to have five and have continuity, and, and if you've got five you feel pretty good about – that's usually, to me, where you can build the most continuity. Now, there, are, there is a time and place. Right now, we're playing six in the game, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's been good for us. You know, they're playing eight, and it's been good for them. So I don't know that there's just one way to do it. Uh, I think what's unique is all eight are seniors and juniors. Generally, when you see other guys play, it's usually a younger guy. Like right now, we've got a guy in J.J. Denman. It's a redshirt sophomore. We're trying to get him some experience, and, and that's been really good for us. You know, they're playing eight juniors and seniors. That, that's a little bit unique. So I, I think they're doing it probably because of how good they really feel about it. Well, we're going to take our first break here. Again, come up, ask your questions here with our guy Jimmy at the microphone. Get your, uh, your questions answered from Coach Kyle Flood, and we'll be back in just a few. The chalkboard. Sweeps, screens. Every play is drawn up and studied. When you can visualize a play, you can execute a play. The same is true in business. The more visibility you have in your supply chain, the better your business performs. That's why UPS lets you track what comes in and what goes out. Logistics is our game. See how we can help yours at thenewlogistics.com. UPS, official logistics partner of the NCAA. AT&T's best ever pricing for individuals and families lets you stay connected with the nation's most reliable 4G LTE network. It's easy. Just find the service plan that fits you best, including options up to 10 lines, so you can text, call, and download pretty much everywhere you go. AT&T, mobilizing your world. AT&T is a proud partner of Rutgers Athletics. Reliability claim based on nationwide carriers 4G LTE, 4G LTE not available everywhere. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Looking for a place to watch all of the Rutgers football action as they head into the Big Ten? Enjoy the games with fellow Scarlet Knights fans at these Rutgers Athletics official watch party locations. New York City's Brother Jimmy's Barbecue, Hoboken's Cadillac Cantina, Tom's River's McIntyre's Pub, New Brunswick's Mike's Courtside Sports Bar and Grill, and Quaker Steak and Lube's three locations in Edison, Brick, and Pohatcon. Oh, what up, Rutgers? Hey, guess what? I bet you didn't know you're about to have three different kinds of barbecue sauce all over that sweet, sticky mug of yours. Also, bet you didn't know, down south in North Carolina, we can actually make some of the best barbecue you've ever had in your ding-dong life. So come on down to Brother Jimmy's Barbecue and put some south in your mouth. Brother Jimmy's Barbecue, located at 5 Eastern Avenue, New Brunswick, New Jersey. Or check us out at brotherjimmys.com. See y'all real soon. We're back here at Brother Jimmy's. Want to take your call? Call in at 1-855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-FLOOD-44. And, of course, come up to our guy, Jimmy. We'll take your questions. And you could also tweet at our football. We'll also answer some of your questions there. So, Coach, want to get into that. We talked a little bit about the offense. Let's talk about some of the challenges that the defense is going to bring to you now coming up forward of what you see in their team called the Black Shirts. They call themselves self-proclaimed. That's right. And I think, uh, you know, something you'll, uh, that jumps out to you right away is they've got, a, they've got a really, really fine defensive line. Two, two guys in particular really jump out. Number seven, Malik Collins, and number four, Randy Gregory. Uh, two guys that are really twitched up. I think uh, number four, Randy Gregory, 
Reminds me a lot of Kamoko Ture. Mm. You know, very, very long, lean, uh, excellent change of direction. Um, is, a, is really a couple of years older and a little bit bigger uh, because of that, uh, but a very similar type player. So I think for them it starts up front, and I would tell you this, their pass coverage is as good as anybody we've played all year. Mm. Well, we've got our first question here tonight. What's your name? Where are you from, my man? James, New Brunswick. Okay. All right, James. Um, I'm a Howard State fan. Okay. Really? And you're but here what why? I want to know. Oh. What I want, hey, 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 oh, hey, 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 oh, hey, hey. I'm a Howard oh. State fan. You know what I mean? You're welcome. I love Rutgers. <laughs> I'm a hometown boy, but my first game in college was Ohio State. Went with my father. I want to know what your defense is going to do different against Nebraska than you didn't do Ohio State. Well, it's a different game. You know, it's not the same team. It's, oh, it's, no. it's not the same schemes. There are some similarities. Uh, there are definitely some similarities, but it's, it's not identical. And I think what we got to do better is we got to execute the details of what we do. And I'm not in any way trying to take away any credit from our opponent because, because they've got an excellent football team. You know, there's a reason why they haven't lost a Big Ten regular season game in two and a half years. They've got an excellent football team, very well coached. Uh, but we didn't play as well as we can. And that's, that's the part that we, have, we can control. And I think if we do that and we execute the details of what we do, we'll play a much better game on Saturday. Welcome to the Big Ten. Thank you, my man. Ohio State fan. All right. Anyways, get make back sure to that. Make sure you charge that guy for everything he exactly. does. Get back to it. <laughs> Watching Gary Nova, you can still see week in, week out, he seems just to get better and better, you know, driving down the field, controlling the offense. How's, you know, you attribute a lot to Coach Ralph Ruzzi, but also – Gary, no, what, what's he doing different? Is he watching more film, or is it just another year under his belt? But he looks better each each week, Coach. I think it's a, it's a couple of things you mentioned. I, I, there's no doubt that you cannot deny the influence that Ralph Regan has had on mm -hmm. him. But at the same time, it, it takes two. It can't. It's not just Coach Regan. Mm -hmm. Coach Regan's done a tremendous job with him, and, and Gary's done a tremendous job of being the student. You know, so he's got the master teacher, and now you need the the willing student. And I, I think it's it's a relationship that has been forged very strong uh, in a very short amount of time. And, and that's unique. And I'm excited about it because I still think, you know, we still have a lot of football left to play this year. And I feel like Gary's getting better and better each week. And I think that trajectory is going to continue. And how does someone like Gary Nova help someone like, you know, Janarian Granton, who had a lot of success his freshman year, you know, struggled a little bit, you know, past few games. But, you know, how do you get, in the, you know, as Gary Nova will get in his head and tell him, give him confidence that I'm going to come back to you week in and week out. Yeah, as the quarterback, I think that's part of your job. You know, part of your job is, is managing the other players on that sideline, and when they come to the sideline, if there's, a, if there's a drop or there's something that doesn't go right, and giving those guys the confidence they need to know that, hey, listen, I'm still here for you. The ball's still coming your way. You just be ready to catch the next one. All right, we're going to take our second break here tonight from Brother Jimmy's. Uh, looking forward to get back some more questions in, get some more phone calls in, some Twitter questions. And, uh, and some we'll questions get, from some people that are from Rutgers, Rutgers fans. fans. That's what Please, we're looking thank for you. Now. <laughs> Thank you. Charge a double, Coach. Charge a double. <laughs> we'll be back in a few minutes, guys. Thanks. We're about living in the moment. You know, that moment when you open a Pepsi and hear the music. We're the doers, the shakers, the tastemakers. The ones who dance to their own beat. The ones who stay cool when things heat up. Whether the party is big or small. We're the ones who never want it to end. The ones who can't stop. And never will. The beat starts at Pepsi.com. Pepsi. Live for now. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. We built the Audi A3 sedan with available features like 4G LTE Wi-Fi, cutting-edge MMI touch, industry-leading LED headlamp technology, and legendary Audi Quattro all-wheel drive. Because why settle for mediocrity when you can power past it? 
Stay uncompromised. Experience luxury without compromise in the new Audi A3 with legendary Quattro all-wheel drive at your local New Jersey Audi dealer. The New Jersey Audi dealers, proud sponsors of Rutgers Athletics. In 2014, it is caught at the goal line. The Scarlet Knights are thinking a touchdown for the Scarlet Knights. Big. It's the third touchdown of the day. Same tradition, new home. Intercepted. The Scarlet Knights have the pick. Big Ten football. Rutgers ball, and this one is over. Listen all season long on your home for Scarlet Knights football. The Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Welcome back inside Brother Jimmy's. Uh, nice round of applause. It is the Kyle Flood Show. Mark Melusis, Eric Legrand. Eric, thank you very much. Man, I got you, Tremendous Mark, job. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm fighting traffic, the rain, everything like that. You get, you did a tremendous Had job. To step up to the plate, man. I got That's you, That's exactly Mark. right. No, well, I mean, honestly, if there's anybody who could have your back better, they would be Eric Legrand. Yeah. Well, we know Eric. Eric can perform under pressure, so that was <laughs> never an issue. No Lights question. Is on time to shine, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you can hit us up, 855-FLOOD-44, 855-356-6344. You can tweet our question. Tweet your questions at our football. We'll also take some questions here. The audience here at Brothers, J uh, Brother Jimmy's in beautiful New Brunswick, New Jersey. Coach, how, how's the team handling this week getting set for Nebraska on Saturday? I know you guys were talking about the defense coming off the Ohio State game in Columbus. How sentiment for your team focused for Nebraska on Saturday? You know, we, we have a, a team of real competitors. I, I really like this football team. I, I've enjoyed coaching them. And, and you get a sense in the, in the offseason when you're around them how much they really care about each other. And I feel like we've had a really good week this week. I think uh, you know, certainly nobody is uh, nobody is satisfied with what happened last week. We're all disappointed, uh, but we've moved on and we've made the corrections. We've owned the corrections. Now we've moved on, and we're looking ahead to our new opponent. And we know it's a tremendous challenge to go on the road in the Big Ten at a place like Nebraska. Uh, but we're looking forward to it because we've had a good week of preparation so far. And as as we're talking about defense again. I want to ask you about, you know, as you see some missed tackles out there, you don't want to tackle as much as practice, but how do you put some emphasis on the missed tackles in, in the game week coming up? As you know, you're going to face a great running back, and he'll, he'll bounce off right off of you. No doubt, man. And I think you, you got to go back to basics. <clears throat> you got to go back to fundamentals. You got to go back to the tackling circuit and, and make sure that we're being as critical as we can be of every little detail because you're right. When you play the best, there's very little margin for error. And if you're just a little bit off on your angle, or you're not setting the edge the right way, or you're not pressing the hip the right way, it's going to be a big play. That atmosphere, you know, you go from Columbus, the big horseshoe, you know, to Big Red and Lincoln. You know, what do you think your team takes away from the experience of playing in front of that crowd last week, taking into this, this experience on Saturday? It, no doubt for, for the younger players who had to experience, for, experience it for the first time, it's good that they've gone through it. Sure. It, it's good. Uh, you know, as coaches, the older players, we've been in those environments before. Other than managing the noise factor, I don't think it's an issue for us. But, but for the younger players, guys that are playing for the first time, whether they're freshmen or sophomores, now they get a chance to all right, say, all right, I did it last week. What is it that I didn't like about my performance? What is it that I didn't like in my, in my preparation? Now I get an opportunity seven days later to do it again and do it better. When you come out on the sideline for like for the first time on the field, though, when you see that type of crowd as a coach, what did, do you take it all in, or you're not even focused on that at all? I'm really not. I'm, I'm focused just on the game, and and, and to me, it's a, it's a great environment. It's a great crowd, yeah. uh, but uh, but we got we got to be focused on what we're doing. Similar things in nature this week. Get your team ready as far as the audio, music, silent uh, communication. We did it. Uh, we did it last week on. Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and then this week, you know, we we allowed the, the first two days of practice to really be the install days and now okay. we'll crank the volume up the next two days. I was pleased with how we handled it. I, okay. I didn't think that, you know, I, it was one of the things I took away from the game was I thought we operated very well within that noise. Now, when it comes to executing what we're doing on offense, defense, especially because that's what we got to do better. But I didn't feel like the noise was a factor for us. Coach, we have a question for you in the audience. Fire away, sir. Hi, uh, I'm Scott Moose. What's going on, uh, Scott? How are you, man? I'm doing great. Great to have you on the show. Big fan of your work. I now, Moose, that. you haven't been yeah, here all yeah. year now. Scott is our guy. He's the man. Oh, he's the man. Scott's the man. our guy now. Scott is as loyal a guy as we have. Oh, that and can't be that. We can't Someday, we can't, well, when we build a statue yeah. for the Kyle Flood <laughs> Show, we're going to build it of our guy right here. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's you like, can't beat that, right? <laughs> 
All right, I, I, I got a hard-hitting question for you, Coach. So I hope you're ready for this. I'm ready. Bo Pelini, very famous for coming out with the cat. Yes. If you could pick one animal to bring out with you, <laughs> what would it be? If I could bring one animal out with me to the game. This is a heavy question now. I, gotta <laughs> I, I think I'll, I'm going to say what I said at Big Ten Media Day. I'm a dog guy. Yeah, I'm a dog guy. I think I'm going with a dog. I don't, I don't see myself with a cat. I've never had a cat. I'm not really a cat person. But an intimidating dog, though, right? Oh, yeah, what type of dog? Coach? Yeah, what? Uh, well, what type of dog would, would a like a Lhasa Apso? No, all right. I gotta Google that. Kind of sure that, that you coach. gotta go with a Rottweiler like yeah, I have right. at home, Coach. A Rottweiler? I have a Rottweiler at home. Uh, possibly a Rottweiler. <laughs> there you I go. do have a Golden Lab at home, but I don't know how ferocious Sally is. <laughs> so you'd go with the you'd go with the dog. You'd go with the Golden, golden Retriever. My wife's that. There you go. I apologize <laughs> to all the Golden Labs out there. <laughs> golden Retriever, uh, Coach Abdullah. You know as. W you know, and Thanks, I know you're talking about defensively slowing down. Thanks a lot, Scott, for the question. You know, most well round. I mean, as good of a running back, well rounded, a guy that's great at picking up blitzes, great at catching the ball out of the backfield. You know, the one game that he didn't uh, produce well this year was against Michigan State, the Spartans. The Rutgers will see uh, Sparty later on in the season. How about Abdullah? A complete player. You know, complete player, excellent speed. Uh, I don't want to – I say this, and I don't want everybody to think that as I say this, I don't think he's fast. That's why I led with tremendous speed. Right. But really, really quick change of direction. Yeah, he's a one-step cut guy. He can make you miss in the hole. And I think, you know, you look at – I'll just reference two games. If you look at their Illinois game and then you look at the Michigan State game, you see why one team he really got loose against. The other team was able to, to – I don't want to say – you don't stop a guy of that quality, but they were able to, to do a good job. Michigan State did a good job of not letting him get through the line of scrimmage without having to change directions. Okay. You know, and, and in the Illinois game, he was able to run his track, hit the line of scrimmage full speed, and now you're dealing with something you don't want to deal with. So right. I, I think it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be critical that we can disrupt his track as we play this football game. Yeah, watching him, I remember versus McNeese State, I believe he scored with under a minute left and broke like three tackles and took it up the field. But I want to go back to now Armstrong, the quarterback, what do you see in him? As you said, he can run the ball. He can sling the rock also. But how do you stop him or prepare for someone who can run like that? Do you have a spy or do you just focus on your D-line, keeping their rush lanes? I think this week you got to do it a little bit more within your system. Mm -hmm. And then on, on third down, you know, when, when, when you know when you can get, if you can get them in the must-pass situations, then you got to you got to rely on your rush lanes. Yeah. But I think on first and second down, I mean, he's part of the run game. And yeah. you better account for him. And not only is he part of the run game, he's 220 pounds. Mm -hmm. So he's not just going to go down. You better make sure you got good form. You wrap him up, bite the ball, et cetera, and, and, and get him on the ground. 855-FLOOD-44, 855-356-6344. Coach, let's head to the phones. Chad, Chad in New Brunswick's up next here on the Kyle Flood Show. What's going on, Chad? Hey, how you doing? Good, Chad. How's What's going, going Chad? Good, good, good. Uh, my question is about uh, just what you guys are talking about, uh, Amir, Amir Abdullah, and how it's really important – that the guys are able to tackle and tackle in space. That's been a recurring um, problem this year in some of the games where we haven't really tackled well, and it showed itself in the last game. And I was curious, if during the season, uh, do you have time to kind of work on that? Because it seems like I'm seeing a lot of guys taking four pursuit angles to make tackles. I see a lot of guys who are going for what they used to call kill shots, trying to hit the guy and not, not wrap up. I see guys uh, just really um, – not breaking down, so it's been a it's been an issue, and I'm wondering. And this game can be really important. So, do you have time to kind of work on that during the season? Because I know it's kind of tough with the, the physical nature of the game. Is that something you guys work on? Oh, we absolutely work on it. And, and like every other skill in football, you don't necessarily perform the entire skill every day to work on it. I think you got to break it down. And and studies have shown that every time a player goes to the ground, the chance of injury goes up. So. What we try to do once we get into the season is we're trying to minimize the amount of time we're on the ground. So we're, we don't do any full contact tackling practices once we get into the season. And I don't think that that's unusual. I, I would be shocked to hear of any, any teams at this level that are doing that because you just you don't want to risk the injuries. But we do have our tackling circuit. And you coach, you coach tackling, and Eric, you can speak to this, you coach tackling on every play on defense. And you could – you. You, know, you you refer to it as a pursuit angle. We refer to it as smart swarm. And you coach smart swarm on every play, every rep of practice. And those are things that over a course of time, 
you should get better at them. I can definitely, yeah, talk about practice. Even when you don't go to the ground, it's always you wrap up, drive the man back. And if you don't, if you're playing in spider pads, you come up, you get a solid base, and you run through them as you would run through them if you were making a tackle. So no matter what, you're still going through the motion, still going through all the exercises, even if you're not going through the ground. So I know the same emphasis that you put on it because I went through it. Chad, thanks a lot for the phone call. A very similar, Coach, I mean, where you see guys where defensively you have to make sure you know where your help is to where you don't allow a guy to get outside of containment, even if, you know, you don't let him get the edge. If he's an edge rusher, you make sure you know where your help is as a defensive player. You know, even if you, you know, slow him down, you know there's a guy coming right behind him, right? Absolutely. And, you know, I, I learned this at a very young age in coaching from a very smart guy. And he said, you know, Offensive football is about creating space, and defensive football is about taking it away. Right. And on every play on defense, there's somebody on the defense who's responsible to set the edge of the defense, and everybody else should be pressing the hip of the ball carrier, and it should look almost like an accordion, compressing to the point where all the space goes away, and then you get them on the ground. In this type of game, I know how important it is maintain your gaps and all always, but is there a little bit more emphasis in this with this type of team and this type of running game to maintain your gap or maybe use just a little bit longer? I don't know if you can put more emphasis on it because it, it's one of those things that gets emphasized every every play. Uh, I think what the players are aware of when you put the film on is what the consequences are when you don't do it right. Yeah. You're listening to the Kyle Flood Show here on 1450 WCTC, New Brunswick. Coach, when um, I, I'm curious when, you know, and when Coach Friedgen joined your staff, uh, someone wrote, you know, might have been the greatest recruit Coach Flood's had here, it, you know, to, to Rutgers. Because we know what Coach Friedgen has been able to do and accomplish as an offensive mind, uh, collegially, National Football League and the like. His work with Gary Nova this year, are you happy where Gary has progressed as a senior? I'm really pleased. I'm pleased with where Gary's at and I and I'm pleased with what we're doing on offense. I okay. like what we're doing, and I know it might seem a little strange to say that coming off the kind of game that we're coming off of, but when you ask that kind of question, i got to look at the whole body of work. Sure. And i got to look at, all right, we're right now we've played seven games. We're really focused on the one ahead of us. I like what we're doing. I like the progress we're making. I like the effort our players are playing with, and I feel good every week that Ralph is putting us in the best situation he can to make us successful. How do you see uh, Leonte Cruz play? How is he could continue to develop with Gary Nova? You know, the, the Bosco connection, it just seems like he gets better and better each week in and week out. No doubt. I think Leonte's a, Leonte's a, a talented football player, and, and he's becoming a dominant football player. He's the kind of guy, he's so strong to the ball. So strong to the ball. He's got such tremendous contact balance and strong hands that he just, every week he seems to make play after play and, and generally makes at least one a week. We're like, that's a spectacular play. Yeah, I remember that <laughs> Coach, during the pregame show before the Ohio State game, I, I asked Eric, I asked Jamal Westerman um, how important it was to set a tone early on in that game, right? And Ohio State set the tone early. How important is it for, for your team on Saturday to set that positive tone in Lincoln against this Cornhusker team to tell them, you know what, we're here. Scarlet Knight football is here. Last week was last week. This week is this week. I think, you know, what you're alluding to is something I've already expressed to the team, and I have no problem saying it here. We need to start better. Right. You know, we got to start the game better. Yeah, you know, we, we got the ball first. We went three and out. They went down and scored. We got the ball, went three and out. They went down and scored. And all of a sudden, you look at, you know, two, six plays into the game on offense. You're down 14 right. nothing. Right. But we didn't execute on offense. We didn't execute on defense. Uh, you know, special teams was whatever it was. But we got to start the game better. Right. And, and there's, there's no doubt that. If we just do the details of what we do better, we're going to start the game better. And I like the way we've gone about it this week. I think we've started well this week in practice. Good. We need to start well tomorrow. We need to start well on Friday. And then ultimately 11 a.m. kick local time. You know, we got to start well on Saturday. And how important is it going to be on special teams? As you say, you got to start better. As you get those kickoff returns, the drive start to get your offense going right away instead of being backed up behind the 20, instead of going now maybe 25, 30, 35 yard line of your own to start off the drive. Right, and the other flip side of it is if we do end up kicking off to start the game, you're Same kicking it to Amir Abdullah. And if you do end up punting the ball early in the game, you're punting it to number 15 who's returned two of them for touchdowns. So they've got some weapons on special teams that we need to contain as well. Welcome inside, Brother Jimmy's. This is the Kyle Flood Show here in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Coach, we got another question from a young Scarlet Knight fan. This Step is a good-looking guy right here. Yes. This is a good-looking guy. When was the last day you were sick? 
I have, you know, this young man's name is Kyle <laughs> Richard Flood. <laughs> and he's actually asking a question that he already knows the answer to. And anybody who's ever been around me knows that I haven't been six since the second grade. And the oh, reason I haven't been six You haven't been six since the second grade? I haven't been six since the second grade because my father told me a long time ago, the only people who get sick are people who have time. <laughs> and, and, then, and, then, and then the next sentence was, you don't have time. Right. So with that in mind, I don't get sick. You don't get sick. I'm going to remember that one, Coach. I like that. I like that. So realistically, though, I know you don't believe, you know, believe in taking sick. Right. You have come under, you know, you're not superhuman, Coach, right? Well, you have I don't know if I would say it cold, that way. Right? What I would tell you, Moose, is you fought through it. From time to time, there are things that try to <laughs> attack my body, and my body repels them. Oh, nah. really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yes, I like that. I don't know if it goes into the superhero category. Yeah, but, but I, I just tell you what happens. But it fights it off. Right. That's impressive. I that like really that, is. I that, that is. is. That is very. And impressive. being that my son is now in seventh grade and my daughter's in fifth grade, I would not expect them to get sick anytime soon either. Yeah. So you tell them that's the same message that was exactly handed from right. you to your dad, from <laughs> exactly your dad right. to you, and you to your children. Exactly right. Can't beat that. Uh, coach the ground game. Uh, you know, certainly. You know, you felt bad for Paul James when he suffered the torn ACL uh, against Navy. Uh, physical runner, breaking tackles, never really went down with the first tackle. A little bit of a difference. When you, and I know Peoples ran the football well against Ohio State in that second half. But this ground game kind of has had to change a little bit because of just what James represented as a physical runner. True? Yeah, Paul's a dynamic football player. And, and I like what... What, uh, what Desmond and what Justin are doing for us in the run game. I'm very pleased with both of them. Sure. They're doing a good job. The one thing Paul did that we have not been able to do since, though, is create the big play in the run game. Right. And Paul had a knack for that, and part of that is, is his ability to shed the first uh, tackler. Part of that is, is uh, his ability to run away from some people. Uh, I like what Des is doing. I like what Justin's doing. Uh, but uh, you know, we're hoping as we go forward here, we can start to generate some of those big plays in the running game as well. And as you as you trans you know transition over to a different running back, do you try to work more of his fits as a running back, or do you just stay to the stay in confines of the offense, or and just try to plug them into it? I think the running backs we have fit well into the schemes that we run. I don't think that that's an issue. And being a being a pro style offense, we do have a, a multiplicity of schemes: zone schemes, gap schemes, man schemes. So every week, if you're defending us, you're going to have to deal with all those. And I think the running backs as a group, and I'll throw Robert Martin into that group as well, I think they do a good job of being complete backs and being able to run all those. And when news came down about the James injury down, you know, at, uh, down at Navy in Annapolis, you know, you mentioned how good of a room you felt that running back room is One and of, how, yeah. how talented they are and how, you know, they could step up. And obviously football, everyone – you know, you've seen those type of injuries. It's really the next guy up presents an opportunity to step in and play. And we're not the only team in the country dealing with it. Right. You know, there's teams everywhere. I saw something. Uh, someone put something on my desk the other day. I guess Indiana's lost two quarterbacks. You know, so every team in the country at some position is dealing with what we're dealing with. We're fortunate that running back room is as strong a room as we have in the building. You know, rivaled by probably the defensive line room would be the other one. Those are probably the two strongest rooms we have in terms of talent and depth. So as we talk about the running game more, Michael Burton, he continues to – Show out there as he's leading up blocks off the field, but right. see them catching the ball outside, making some juke moves. I, I saw him hit the circle, but two <laughs> spin moves. So a few times out of bounds, coach. Where'd that come from? Michael will be proud to know that. He, that he I hit saw this. it. He got a, he got a <laughs> Madden remote control <laughs> reference. I got that I did not expect tonight. Uh, you know, Michael's an excellent player, and, and somebody I think's got a really, really bright future ahead of him, um, and a complete player. And you know, it's at some point. Yeah, don't be surprised if we handle the ball as well because he, he's a very very capable runner. But he does such a great job as valuable a football player as we have on our team. And I'm not sure everybody realizes that because of all the little things, the unsung things that he does uh, within every game plan. Co you know, Coach, I'm curious because, you know, talking to some former NFL players, I was talking to Westy on Saturday uh, after that game came down. I said, well, you know, what is – what does the coach do with this kind of game film, right, after the Ohio State game? He's going, well, some, it depends on the coach. You know, some coaches will analyze it and break it down. Other coaches will say, you know what, that's a distant memory. Forget, there's nothing we're going to take out of it. We've got to compartmentalize that, move on. I'm, cu I'm curious how, how you as a co uh, yourself, your coaching staff, handled that Ohio State game. I think it's, it's important for a couple of things to happen. I think that – First thing you got to do is you got to own your performance. Okay. As a coaching staff, as players, everybody in the program has to own what they did and understand, hey, what we did wasn't good enough. You got to figure out what is it that we did or what is it that our opponent did that now applies to next week. 
Right. Because we better make sure we do a better job next week against it. And then you got to move on. You got to move on. You can't. I learned a long time ago from some of the guys I worked with, you can't let the same game beat you twice. And if Great you point. dwell and you linger on that game, you're taking time away from prep preparing for that game coming up. And now all of a sudden, you're not doing everything you can to be 1-0 in the game you're playing this week. So I feel good that we've done that. It's one of the reasons I like practicing on Sunday. It allows us to really make the corrections, own it, and then put it behind us. And by the time we come back Tuesday morning, we're going. Kind of like what my dad used to say growing up, don't get caught looking behind you. Make sure you're looking ahead. No doubt. Right? Keep you can't your eyes look. in front of you. All right, Scarlet Knight fans, this week's football broadcast is available on TuneIn, ScarletKnights.com, and your local radio station. Select games are also available on Sirius XM Satellite Radio. There's no reason to miss your favorite team on game days, no matter where you are. So make sure to listen. We'll come back. Mark Malusis, Eric Legrand, and obviously Coach Kyle Flood. It's the Kyle Flood Show right here. At Brother Jimmy Looking Stupor. for a place to watch all of the Rutgers football action as they head into the Big Ten? Enjoy the games with fellow Scarlet Knights fans at these Rutgers Athletics official watch party locations. New York City's Brother Jimmy's Barbecue, Hoboken's Cadillac Cantina, Tom's River's McIntyre's Pub, New Brunswick's Mike's Courtside Sports Bar and Grill, and Quaker Steak and Lube's three locations in Edison, Brick, and Pohatcon. What's up, Rutgers? Y'all ready for some football? Brother Jimmy's in New Brunswick is your headquarters for Scarlet Night Football, as well as your home for the Jets, Giants, and all your favorite NFL teams. With over 30 HDTVs, we serve up all the NFL action on Sunday and Monday nights with amazing food and drink specials all game long. So come on down to Brother Jimmy's and put some South in your mouth. For reservations and event information, visit us at BrotherJimmy's.com. Brother Jimmy's Barbecue, located at 5 Eastern Avenue, New Brunswick, New Jersey. See y'all soon. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Hey, Rutgers fans, not only do the employee owners of STS Tire and Auto Centers make sure your vehicle is running right and provide you with great tire prices, they also want you to win their STS True Fan Rutgers football experience. Visit STSTire.com and enter to win four tickets to the Wisconsin game. You'll spend time on the field and take home a Rutgers jersey and sign football all at STSTire.com. STS, nobody treats you better than an owner. STSTire.com. Did you know that Bill Rasmussen, the founder of ESPN, earned his MBA at Rutgers? With the number one public MBA in the New York metropolitan area, according to U.S. News, professionals come to Rutgers to enhance their careers without being saddled with the huge debt that comes with attending a private business school. Rutgers Executive Education provides access to the top minds in their fields. Digital marketing, social media, healthcare management, entrepreneurship, and much more. In class, online, or at your company. Learn more at business.rutgers.edu backslash executive education. Hey, New Jersey football fans, are you ready for a better way to do car insurance? Look for Plymouth Rock Assurance at an upcoming Rutgers game and ask us about great rates, taxi reimbursement, and unparalleled, and unparalleled service from local folks right here in New Jersey. Certain limitations do apply. All right, Coach, well, we talked about, obviously, the Ohio State game defensively, offensively. Now this team goes on the road. Your squad goes on the road you know, in Lincoln to take on a, a pretty good Cornhusker team. Polini, uh, you know, has been around the college game for a while. Do you, do you know Coach at all? Have you? I've gotten to know him a little bit in, right. in the head coaches meetings. You know, it's really the only time I, I've been around him. We actually sat next to, other, next to each other at the last one, and, and, um, and I enjoyed speaking with him. You know, for us as competitors, you're, you're certainly very cordial in those meetings. There's not a lot of information sharing because right. we're all competing against each other. But um, He's an intense guy. Well, yeah, he is. <laughs> I was about to say. Was about to say. And, and he's, he's got a tremendous resume as, as a defensive football coach. I yeah. think his, his team reflects that. He's had tremendous success out there. I don't know that they've ever won less than nine games since he's been the head coach wow. out there. He's done a tremendous job, and, and, and he's got a good program, and he's got good players. I was about to say, do you ever weigh yourself like in a toughness with a team? As he said, he's a very tough guy. You look at him very intense. Do you see, you know, I know Rutgers is very intense. That's how we play our defense. Do you ever measure up every times and then, like how, how intense somebody was? Or you could just tell by the way the ball is being pushed by the, the, by the D-line and O-line. Sure. I, I, think, I think the toughness of your football team is generally measured in two ways, how you run the ball and how you stop the run. 
I think that tells you if you've got a physical and, and tough football team and and when you do it in a game, then you feel like you played good physical, tough football. And, and when you don't, well, you got to get it corrected. Because if you don't stop somebody from running it, they're going to keep running it. And if, if, we're, if we're able to run the ball effectively, it really opens up everything we want to do on offense. Coach, we got another question? we got another question. Yes. And another person that I seem to be pretty familiar <laughs> with here. My daughter, Isabella, has stepped to the microphone. Hello, Isabella. Hi. How are you? Good. This is a big day for the Flood children. There you go. When is your next off day? My next off day. This is not an uncommon question for a football coach. Uh, I think right now we're targeting the first Saturday in February. First Saturday right. in February. The first Wednesday is signing date, and I think the first Saturday is probably going to be uh, going to be the first time we have off. Yay! There you go. <laughs> it's interesting. Put, it, Isabella, put it on the calendar. <laughs> did you see? I don't know if you happen to see it. And a great question from Isabella. But Real Sports did a piece on on Urban Meyer when he left Florida and how. You know, his family basically made him sign a list. His daughters, <laughs> who are older than your ki your children, but made there was like ten things on the list about what he, you know, needs to eat, needs to eat three meals a day, stuff like that, because he, you know, his body was breaking down. It's you one know, of the meals at Brother Jimmy's. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. But there is that balance you have to have, right, Coach? You have to. You have to try to strike a balance in a profession that's a that's a very competitive profession. It's, it's a high performance industry. Right. And it's a, it's a time intensive because really in, in college football it's two jobs you have your coaching job and you have your recruiting job and you have a you know anywhere between a, a hundred and a hundred and five guys on the football team and you're trying to be a, a head coach and a father to them and, right but you also have your family at home so it is a tremendous challenge and that's why for me as we get to Wednesday and, and the game plan portion of the week is is slowing down a little bit. You know, this is why we do the radio show on Wednesday. Sure. When possible, if my children get their homework done, it gives them an opportunity <laughs> to come to the show, and, and and we get to spend, we get to steal some time as the week goes on because you want to do that. And I've also referenced, you know, people say, do you like a 12 noon game? I say, I love 12 noon game because that means I gain some time in the evening with my family, and and those are things that you you try to take advantage of when you can. Sure. Yeah, and sometimes people forget about things like that, coach. Do you have like a certain schedule each week that you choose that what what you're going to do, and also sometimes put some more Relying on your your um, offensive coordinator, defense coordinator, and the rest of your coaching staff so you can find some more time for yourself to get those meals in or get a workout in or hang out with your family. It's hard to do. I have a schedule that, that, that I try to stick to as much it's as hard. possible, but it's a, but it, it's pretty full. You know, it's, a, it's a full schedule, and, and, and I love it. It's, right. it's, I, love, I love what I do for a living. I love the job, and I love working with these young people. But you, you're, you do have to, on some level, strike some type of balance and – you know, when people think of balance, they think of a scale being balanced. In my profession, it's not that. No. But you do have to find the time to be with your family, but not at the expense of doing your job. Because, right. again, you have to, it's a very competitive, uh, very competitive industry. And there's a lot of people on the football team that are counting on us as co coaching staff to make sure we're doing everything we can to get them ready. Well, and yeah, and you hear all the stories where you know coaches sleeping in their offices, not going home, yeah. everything like that because of the game film, breaking it down. There's never too much analysis when looking at game film. Maybe there's something that you see third or fourth game, you watch a particular team that you feel like you can take advantage of with your team. Absolutely, a absolutely. And, and I've heard those stories. And the interesting thing about those stories is if you're around some of the guys that are really experienced, I use the word experienced coaches and, it's always interesting to me that they're always the ones that are saying, don't do it. Right. You know, and I've never been a, a sleep in the office guy, so I'm not going to say I've never done it, but it's, I try not to do it. Uh, I think it's important, even, uh, even if it's only for a few hours, to make sure you get home at night. We'll come back. We'll wrap it up. We'll get some keys to the game here. Brother Jimmy's New Brunswick, New Jersey, Mark Malusis, Eric Legrand, and, of course, Coach Kyle Flood. This is the Kyle Flood Show. AT&T's best ever pricing for individuals and families lets you stay connected with the nation's most reliable 4G LTE network. It's easy. Just find the service plan that fits you best, including options up to 10 lines, so you can text, call, and download pretty much everywhere you go. AT&T, mobilizing your world. AT&T is a proud partner of Rutgers Athletics. Reliability claim based on nationwide carriers 4G LTE, 4G LTE not available everywhere. The chalkboard. Sweeps, screens, every play is drawn up and studied. When you can visualize a play, you can execute a play. The same is true in business. The more visibility you have in your supply chain, the better your business performs. That's why UPS lets you track what comes in and what goes out. Logistics is our game. See how we can help yours at thenewlogistics.com. 
UPS, official logistics partner of the NCAA. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. When you park with the parking spot, our friendly drivers get you from trunk to airport terminal faster. And the time you save parking with us, you can use to daydream about the road trip and leading a stadium of screaming fans in the biggest way ever. Make a free reservation now at theparkingspot.com, and with the money you save, you'll be able to afford face paint remover. Free reservations now at theparkingspot.com. The Parking Spot, proud sponsor of Rutgers Athletics. We have airport parking covered. Your chance to talk Rutgers football with the coach is the Kyle Flood Show. What we have at Rutgers is a culture of people who love football. Live from Brother Jimmy's on Easton Avenue in New Brunswick, Wednesday nights at 7.30 with Eric Legrand and me, Chris Carlin. All right, this is a little suspicious right here. Who's this guy? Back to the phones. That's a good question. I go to the game with my son. My son's 13. We all know that you've been a class act during your time here. The program has run the right way. Can't wait to get back on the field. The Kyle Flood Show on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Welcome back inside Brother Jimmy's here in beautiful New Brunswick, New Jersey. Rainy Wednesday evening. It is the Kyle Flood Show. Great uh, group in attendance here. Coach, we have another question from a young gentleman. Fire away, sir. Another guy I'm familiar with here, Jake Galati. <laughs> All right. Got everybody. Friends and family night. Let's go. What do you think the biggest threat will be on Saturday? Well, I don't think you have to look any further than Amir Abdullah. I think the, uh, the, the Nebraska band, I believe, did something at their halftime show that said, Fear Amir. And I don't know if, uh, if fear is the feeling we, we feel, but we have a very healthy respect uh, for Mira Dula. He's one of, the, one of the more dynamic players in the, in the country and, and somebody that you better, you better make sure you pinpoint him when you're doing the game plan. Right. Like your T-shirt. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, very much so. He's got an Eric LeGrand uh, T-shirt on. It looks great. Thank you. Uh, you got it. Thank you. Um, Keys, you know, we, we broke, we've talked about, you know, moving on from Ohio State, this Nebraska team, Abdullah, what they represent, Polini. You know, a good defensive mind has been, as you talked about, Coach, for, for years in the college game. What are some keys you're going to lay down mentally what you think Rutgers needs to do to walk out of Lincoln with a victory on Saturday? Yeah, I think there's a, there's a couple things that, that, that I would pinpoint right away. And, and for us, I said it before in, in terms of, of being a tough football team, but running the football and stopping the run. You know, right. Nebraska is a 70-30 run pass team. It's what they are. And after seven games – you have a pretty good snapshot of what somebody wants to be when you look at that. And, and you know, that's what they want to be. And we have to, we have to force them not to be that. If they're 70, 30 on Saturday, that means they're being effective and, and that's not what we want. So uh, we need to make sure we, we start our game plan with stopping the run, which is what we do every week. It's not nothing new, but the emphasis goes up this week because of what they want to do. And for us, we need to run the ball effectively early in the game. I'm pleased with how we progressed as the game went on last week. But we got to start the game better. And when I say start the game better, we got to start the game running the ball better. Coach, good luck on Saturday. I appreciate that. Yeah, One good more. luck, Coach. Thanks to everybody here in attendance, Brothers Jimmy's, and tremendous job by Eric Legrand the first <laughs> 20 minutes. I mean, awesome job by Eric. As I was stuck in a lot of traffic trying to get down here. My <laughs> apologies, good, Coach. My Kyle apologies, Kyle. Eric. Uh, Coach, good luck on Saturday, all right? Thank you, Moose. I appreciate you making it. You got yeah. it. Our thanks to everybody here in attendance. Obviously, Paul. And uh, enjoy the game on Saturday. We hit the airwaves 11 a.m. with Rutgers countdown to kickoff. The Scarlet Knights on the road to take on the Cornhuskers in Nebraska, looking to start another winning streak. Coach, we'll talk again next week. Sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. You All got right. it, Coach. Thank you, Brother Jimmy's. Thank you, Brother Jimmy's. Have a great night, everybody. You've been listening to the Kyle Flood Show. been listening to the kyle flood show live from brother jimmy's on easton avenue in new brunswick the kyle flood show has been brought to you by at&t mobilizing your world pepsi live for now ups to learn how ups can put the power of logistics to work for you visit the 